everyone. Thank you for joining me on this video. Talumnia time. Here they are on their tray, seeing as it is winter. I have to bring mine inside every night and sometimes they have to stay inside during the day simply because the temperatures here are not exactly what they would prefer. I'm currently hovering between 12 degrees at night and 15 degrees during the day. I do have pockets of warmth around the patio where I can have them enjoy some sunshine and as you can see, airflow because when it comes to watering them this time of year, it is quite precarious. But the main thing I wanted to talk to you about today with regards to Tolumnias in general is I want to pinpoint a few things that are very obvious this time of year and show you things that normally in the summer are not that obvious because that's their happy place. So if you have Tolumnias and you're encountering certain things and you're not quite sure what's going on, I'm hoping to get through the list of showing you cold stress, their general growth habit because I'm having things die off, which in the summer is not as easy to see, and mechanical damage as opposed to cold stress and rot. So if I miss any of these as I go through the video, please let me know in the comments below so that I can give you a timestamp of where that symptom is. This video is totally off script. I hope to cover everything I've been observing in the last weeks so that I can give you a heads up if you have similar things happening to your telumnias. Right, first of all, these beauties are gonna have to get off that tray and up against the hedge. I'll be hanging them up so that I can show you how carefully these need to be watered if the temperatures aren't there for quick, quick evaporation of the water to avoid rot. So let me get that done and I'll be right back. So this is their configuration at this point in time up against the hedge. This is an area that is very, very breezy, even if the temperatures are not exactly warm. They will dry out here. Everyone that has a spike is facing the facade to keep the spike facing the highest source of light. The ones down here are hanging because they don't need that space up there for their spikes. The spikes have stopped blooming. They just need a lot of airflow so that they won't rot. So there's a, there's a method to my madness here. Why, who is hanging where? I am very, very mindful this year about watering. They do need water, but they do need to dry out. So I have my jet on quite fine, very thin jet. And I try to stay below the apex with the main jet of water. I am also watering at a time of day that gives them still plenty of airflow to dry out. And I'm mainly targeting the base of the basket, trying to make sure that there's at least water in the roots. The residual spray is something I have to factor in. That is why time of day for me is super important. Just because I'm targeted with my water, you can see how the mist will go up into the tiny little crevices of the structures of the telumnia. So I'm here now at noon. I still find it a bit too chilly for them, but they have at least five hours to dry out. So here's my first candidate. Because of the watering, I was just showing you, despite being as careful as possible and getting residue spray everywhere, of course, there's a massive risk for rot, okay? So I saved this leaf right here in anticipation of this video, several leaves as a matter of fact, because this little fan right here should be as fully leafed out as this one in the back here. But you can see I only managed to salvage one little leaf. It is still producing a spike, which is surprising because at this stage, normally, if the crown is compromised, there is no chance of that fan spiking. It'll still produce roots, which is great. More roots, stronger also for the next go around with the next new growth. But the fact it's producing a spike 
is not a given. This to me is a happy result. I treated the rot when I was noticing it the first time and I just poured in cinnamon straight into the crown. I did not want to put in a liquid disinfectant like dragon's blood. Seeing as the rot was caused by liquid, I wanted it to dry out and lucky I got away with it this time. So if you can see that your little fans are starting to rot, the texture of the leaf will turn yellow and usually the symptoms start from the base towards the end of the leaf as opposed to an old leaf dying back starting at the end towards the middle. So that is how I managed to, with a lot of luck and a lot of cinnamon, save this growing point right here and still get a spike. The next thing I want to show you this time of year, it's very, very obvious how tolumnias grow. They have a very, very tight little rhizome so fans will die off in the back very slowly, but they move forward on a rhizome. It is tight, it is very difficult to see, but here you can see two fans back to back, the left one being the older one, the right one being the newer one. But then when you look at the back of the orchid, you can see how the older rhizomes right here have lost their fan, excuse me, right there. So that's one fan gone right here, and this next fan will also go. Now that is very, very normal. It is not something to be concerned about. They won't hold on to their fans indefinitely. Every single hybrid is different, of course, but here you can see as well that it had a very weak fan to begin with. I was struggling with my telumnias for about a year and a half before I got them dialed in, but the back fan here has died off leaving room for a newer one, even though it was weak. And now it has moved on to a stronger one, which is in spike. I do not have my telumnias labeled properly. So this one I'm just calling hot fuchsia with dotted lip. But you see this whole telumnia looks very, very weak and you would think, no, don't let it bloom. What you should look for is how are the roots doing? If there's enough roots, not every telumnia is big, bushy, and has a lot of fans. It'll go from hybrid to hybrid. It will be completely different. Not everybody looks like my pomegranate. This here being my telumnia pomegranate. An absolutely vigorous beast of a telumnia. It is beautiful and fabulous. And the spike has finished blooming, but it is starting to branch. But you can see how vigorous this orchid is as opposed to the ones I've just shown you. And this orchid is a bit different as well in its growth habit because new growths are already starting, but the back ones looking absolutely marvelous. So not every telumnia has to look like this to be super healthy. The vigor is determined by the hybrid. The next example I want to show you is what fans look like when they grow but the temperatures are not there for them to grow to their full potential. Do not fertilize more thinking that you're under fertilizing if you see this happen. This is a very vigorous little telumnia, even though she looks a little bit manky right through the middle there. But you can see how many little fans she's growing at the wrong time of year. And through my viewfinder, I find this. I'll be right back. Let me get some garlic alcohol. This is what I do even when I'm on my own. I stop what I'm doing the minute I see a pest. Especially with telumnias, I can think, oh, I'll go back and deal with it afterwards. And then I will forget which one it was. The angle of my visual is not exactly the same. And boom, I even may have forgotten. But anyway, pest is one thing. We've dealt with that in another video. But I wanted to show you the cold temperatures, this orchid wants to grow this time of year, but is not exactly in its right and happy place right now. So do not fertilize thinking you are under fertilizing. If your temperatures are not to the telumnia temperature liking, the vigor of the orchid will do what it normally does anyway. Telumnias don't as such have a rest period. So this is a sign of not ideal temperatures for the fans to grow to their full potential. But either way, 
these little fans will produce their own teeny tiny set of roots. And that is also going to be something for the strength of the orchid in the coming years. So the size of the growths on a tulumnia do not indicate whether there will be roots or not. They do not indicate whether you're fertilizing enough or not. I would be very, very conservative on the fertilizer if your temperatures are not high enough so that you understand the difference between, oh, I need to add more fertilizer as opposed to, no, nope, your temperatures aren't high enough, but the orchid's growth, rhythm and habit, it wants to grow. Speaking of rhythm, growth habit, being too cold, here is a tolumnia that is showing signs of cold symptoms on a different scale, and that is when the leaves turn in like this and you would think it's a sign of desiccation and you need to water more. Nope, that is not the case. We can consider this being an old fan and it's dying off. That is not the case because the leaves themselves are not starting to shrivel from the back. The one down here belongs to a very, very old fan, which we can't pull off yet. So if you see any of your tulumnias doing this, it is not a sign of you need to water more. This tulumnia has a great little root system. All the roots are fine in there, but you can see how in this hybrid, the leaves are flattening and you would really think, whoa, desiccating. This is cold symptoms. They're protecting themselves from the stress they're being subjected to by closing off their leaves to protect them. Segwaying right into mechanical damage as opposed to old age. When you saw in the beginning, I was hanging my tolumnias up against the hedge. The reason I do that is to give them maximum airflow and I take them off the tray. Otherwise the water would be in the tray and the drying off procedure wouldn't be as quick. So this being put up against the hedge because of the way the spikes are growing, as you can see the direction of the light is coming from here. This is flattened up against the hedge and it will kink a leaf or even all the way down, depending on how squished it was. But this is mechanical damage. It's not a detriment to the rest of the fan. It's just an unfortunate side effect of having to handle the orchid more than she normally would have to tolerate. Keeping orchids in position is the best practice, but if the circumstances don't permit it, then you will incur mechanical damage, unfortunately. This mechanical damage is something I can totally accept. Breaking a spike, not so much. Another sign here that you see is how much anthocyanin this orchid has. This is not because of high light. Clearly the time of year, they are not exposed to such bright light that this would be the reason for anthocyanin. This is also not magnesium deficiency. This whole orchid is showing symptoms of cold and protecting itself from the adverse conditions. And anthocyanin is one of those protective mechanisms that will kick in. So don't be confused between what you see on one instance, thinking more fertilizer, more water, maybe more magnesium, put all the symptoms together in one and then recognize that this is cold stress. Another symptom of cold stress is burnt tips here. Again, the orchid is fine, plenty of roots in its little basket, no problems, no pests, but you can see how the tips have started to desiccate. This is not fertilizer burn. This is also in this hybrid, a sign of cold damage. I can say that with such conviction and point you in the right direction regarding the symptoms because the orchid is in spike on two fans and there's plenty of fans in the middle to go around and none of the old fans are falling apart. So that's the big, big signal there that it is only cold damage, nothing else. So keep your symptoms listed, know your temperatures and notice the vigor of the orchid. If there's a lot of die off in the middle, then it's a rot problem, another problem. You can also see the desiccation is coming from the tip. It is not coming from the base. And this right here is my Tolumnia Red Devil. I know her because I had her in bloom many, many years ago. One single bloom, I thought I lost her. Beautiful, beautiful Tolumnia. You can see the tips 
of her are also struggling with cold. But what I wanted to point out on these two candidates right here are their spikes. Now, a lot of people that grow Tulumnia say do not cut the spikes off because they are capable of branching. And that, as you can see, has been the case here with this Tulumnia. She has a, still got an active spike and she has branched several times, even out of the same node, double. So why am I pointing this out? Well, let me show you something. On this spike here, the first spike of my red devil, I snapped the spike right at the top, but I left the spike because I'm anticipating that she will branch. Not the case when it comes to Tulumnia spikes. Once you damage the tip of the spike, the whole spike will die back, has happened to me several times over the years. The nodes will not branch. I've left it because I was hoping, well, I broke the spike, it's a Tulumnia, it's gonna branch. No, the whole spike died back. It's at this point in time that it's okay to cut the spike, not while the spike is still like this, and you think you're gonna tidy up and cut it here, banking on the nodes to possibly branch, it will kill the whole spike. So that is something I've noticed over the years, to not be too fussed about the appearance of your tolumnias by trying to be tidy and cutting a spike back just to make sure that the rest looks neat and groomed. Let me show you another example. If you're still with me, I appreciate that. Thank you. Here we go. A spike that has bloomed all the way to the end. It's branched and the branch itself has branched as well. Now these blooms are tired, so at least you can take them away. The ones that are fading, that's not the problem. But if I were to cut the tip of this spike right here, all this is not going to respond. I'm getting another branch down there. And that is why leaving the spike on until it looks like this, completely dried off and died back all by itself. That is when you can cut the spike. Let me show you one more example about these spikes and what you should let your Tulumnia do all by its lonesome, without interference. The spike itself has finished blooming right here. I'm expecting a little bit of branching right there and it's coming. This spike on the same Tulumnia, you can see no interference, it's finished blooming and the spike itself is drying off. No interference on my part but it is branching. So you see, every hybrid is a little bit different with how spikes respond, but there's one common denominator is, do not be too groomy on your Tulumnia spikes just because of aesthetic purposes, because they will all react and respond differently with one exception. If you cut too soon, the rest of the spike is just going to abort. So let them look a little bit scruffy and see how much you can get out of a Tulumnia spike and let it dry back completely before cutting it off. One more thing to point out, bud blast for Tulumnias will happen at any time just with every other orchid. These Tulumnias live on a tray, they go indoors at X hour, and then they come outdoors again next day for their watering and drying off. So Tulumnia blooms normally last much, much longer, but of course, as with any other orchid, if you put them through environmental stress like I have to, then they won't last as long. But these are my two latest bloomers that I'm very happy, even though I can't identify them properly. But this one here, my hot fuchsia with dotted white lip and my beautiful red devil that I know to be a red devil with two spikes coming. And I was hoping to have a lot more Tulumnia blooms to show you for this video, but because I'm losing blooms faster than normal due to the circumstances, I thought best to do this video now, show you the symptoms that are not always obvious during the summer, because during the summer, everything is hunky-dory for these orchids. And in case you find yourself struggling with weird looking signs on your leaves, the way your fans are behaving or declining, I really, really hope that this video was helpful to you to understand how your Tulumnia is growing 
what it is doing and what you are probably not doing wrong at all. It's just a matter of the conditions. Let me know in the comments below if I covered every single point I mentioned at the beginning and if I've missed something. Bring that to my attention and I shall elaborate further. In the meantime, I appreciate your time. Thank you so very, very much for watching. From a rather chilly southern Spain and from my Tolumnias, have a great day. On one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.